Hey, what's up everyone? John Stayskull here. Welcome back to yet another game dev tutorial. So we're going to have a bit of fun today. I'm pretty excited. We're going to build a simple item collection system, which allows the player to walk into and make contact with different item types, money, potion, and maybe like a power up and store those different item types in an array that can be then processed in different ways. All right, let's get into it. So we've got a sample scene here, and in my library here, I've just got a few different um, item images that I've created. Um, so these are just images. And if we run this now, we'll see when the player walks into it, nothing happens. So our objective here is to um, make contact with those items, make them disappear, and then store them in some kind of a way that we can use and process them into meaningful ways. There's a few different first steps we can use here, but I think the best way to go about this is to attach box colliders um, to each, well, not necessarily box colliders, but colliders. Um, so we'll start with the coin, then we jump over here, add component, and we'll say, uh, we'll say circle collider 2D, as we're in 2D, and Importantly, we're going to check this um, tr is trigger box. If I have it unchecked and the player walks over to this thing, look at that. <laughs> That's outrageous. Yeah, so <laughs> the player um, yeah, is making hard contact with the coin. So we want the coin to be a trigger um, in this case so we can pass through it like so. We'll just go and do this with um, the rest of these other items. And you just wanna kind of fine tune your colliders to match whatever the type of shape you're working with. This one's a bit of a circle, so we'll do it like that. Doesn't have to be perfect for now, but that'll do. Um, if you wanna use these assets, I'll put a link down below. You can pick them up and use them for your own um, experimentation. I don't want to see them in any games. <laughs> Actually, go ahead, do whatever you like. Um, so we'll finish up with this one, um, add another uh, circle type. Okay, so now we have three items uh, of different types and they all have um, colliders um, of slightly different proportions. The next step is to create a new tag from the tag list and assign them to these items. If you're building a small game, you can create a new tag for uh, different items. So you can have one tag called coin, one tag called uh, potion, one tag called power up, and that's fine because we've only got three different items. But if your game grew to a very large size um, and you had you know, 20 different items, it's not really feasible to at that point have 20 different item types. Rather, you wanna have one tag type, like collectible or item collect, and then um, process the type in a script. So that won't make too much sense right now, but I'm gonna show you what that means and we're gonna um, elaborate on it. So in this tag list, so you can get to the tag list by clicking any one of these different items um, selecting um, tag up here and just go to add tag and you'll have a bunch of um, default tags that Unity has created so go add tag and here we'll just add plus and here I'm gonna say collectible uh, save and we just click back on that item and we just want to make sure that that collectible tag is assigned to the coin We'll do the same for the potion, collectible. And we'll do the same for the star. Right, so now the next step after that would be to, um, well, actually, let's jump over to the player and write in the collision code um, to make contact with this new collectible item type. Um, so in this case, I might just write the collision code on the main player script. So we'll double click and open the player script. So importantly, we're not gonna do on collision enter. Because we made our collision items triggers, remember we tapped that um, is trigger box, so we're gonna do on trigger enter 2D. 
And if you just find that from the autocomplete, um, Visual Studio will do a nice job um, processing that for you. So what this means is anytime we make contact with a trigger collider, like those items, this function is going to fire and it's going to give us some information um, through this. This tells us what we've collided with. Let's do a console log. Let's go print colliding. Just to make the point that um, to show this is actually working. And we just run that and if I walk over to the coin, boom! You see that down here? If I open that up, colliding. And if I walk into the next one, Ah, right. So we've got that issue here where we didn't make them all triggers. So I'm just going to go through, make sure that, and notice that, that, that's actually, I'm glad that happened, because notice that because that wasn't a trigger, that code, um, that code here did not fire. It only fired on the trigger. If I had a on collision enter 2D now, then yes, it would have worked. So that's an important distinction because your item types, your item collectibles don't necessarily have to be triggers. If for whatever reason you need them to be hard items, then you can use this function and run both of these simultaneously. For now, we're just gonna be working with the triggers because this is, in my opinion, the more common kind of um, item type collision you're gonna have. So I'm just gonna make these all triggers um, I'm just going to run that again, and we should now get three different separate logs. One, two, three. So if I just open this again, you can see I've got one, two, three. Right, so now we know we've collided with three items. That's cool. But we've got three different item types, so we need a way to differentiate to the player what he's collected. Because the player wants to know the difference between a, a coin and a potion. Because if it's all being um, uh, processed as the same thing, then what's the point? Um, if you've only got one item type in your game, sure. And some very simple games might only have one item type. Like Pac-Man um, has coins. But then again, Pac-Man also has those big coins that let you then chase the um, ghosts. So you need a way to differentiate between items. So one important note is this function here will um, track collisions with all triggers. So we want to limit our collision check here to only those collectibles with that collectible tag. So what we'll do is we'll say if collision, so we're referencing this one here, dot compare tag, so we're checking the tag of the object we're colliding with, and we'll say um, collectible, which is that tag we created. So if the um, if the tag of the item we collect um, hitting is called collectible, then print we have collected an item. And what we can do here also, we can say um, collision dot game object dot destroy. Wait a second. Destroy collision dot game object. So we're just going to now remove the game object from the screen when we make contact. And I just want to show you something now. I'm just going to duplicate this last star item, okay? And I'm going to take that collectible tag away. Untag, just to show you the difference here. So now check this out. Boom! 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 Three! You have collected an item three times. And now, watch this. The last one is no longer working because we have limited the collection to only those items with the collectible. Very good. So now we have a way to collect only collectible items. Okay, but now we still need to differentiate between which type it is, right? We know it's a collectible, but now we want to take the collectible and store it. We might create an array now a list specifically that we can store the items. So just to ignore all this stuff I have here, this is to do with the player's movement and the input. So up here we're just going to say, and we'll say list, and we're going to make this of type string. What am I doing? I need to give this thing a name. Um, 
items. Excuse me. <laughs> I don't know what the hell I was trying to write just there, but it was insane. So, <laughs> we all, yeah. This is the second video I've made today, so <laughs> I'm running out of steam. Uh, so anyway, so yeah, a list is a, a type of, I guess a type of array you could say, just to, um, um, but you can add to it as you go, where with an array in Unity, you need to kind of declare how big the array is up front. And then what we just want to do is in the start function, we just want to say items equals new uh, list. And we just need to pass in string. And while we're passing in string, it, uh, means, it means that this list type can only take string types. When creating a list, you need to define what type of data type you're going to put in. Is it a game object? Is it a string? Is it a... Um, we could make this game objects. We could say game objects and we could store um, the game objects in here. But it's kind of unnecessary because it's a lot more lightweight to um, store the string. Because if we stick the game objects into the, into the list, then that list is holding a whole bunch of game objects. And we don't need to, need to really know all those collectible game objects. We just want to know what they were, like their um, reference name or something like that. So that's why we're doing it as a string. And what we need to do now, we want to create a um, collectible script. So what we're going to do, we're going to click any of these collectibles here. We just go add component and we we'll say new script. Say collectible script. And we'll click create and add. So that's now created a collectible script for our um, coin. And what we'll want to do, we just want to go through the other op items we've created and also just add that script. You can kind of select them all and do it or just do it one by one, whatever. So we'll open that script up now. Um, so we're going to say public item type. Sorry, public string item type. That's the second time I've, I've written it. In that, in that back to front way. And I can get rid of this. We don't need that. All we need is the item type exposed here. So this will now expose the um, item type field. So now look at this. We can say up here, we can say coin. We can say potion. And we can say um, I'll just say power, whatever that is. And then we will go back to our uh, player script. So here now, check this out. Now we can get that information, the item type, I'll say string item type oh, equals collision dot game object dot get component collectible script remember we created that collectible script just running out of space here and we'll do open and close brackets dot and now check this out we now get access to that item type very very nice we'll just I'll put this print down here so not, rather than just saying we have collected an item, we have collected a, and I can now pass in that item type here. So now we have the reference to the item type, and now we can actually stick that. Um, so the items that items list we created, we can say items dot add, and we can pass in that um, item type. We are storing them uniquely into an array and that or that list rather and that list will grow and grow and grow depending on how many items we have and then we can do different things with it we can create a um, inventory management screen and populate that screen with all the different items and that's something that I won't do in this particular video because that will just make this video over an hour long so I will make a video in the near future showing you how to display this list in a meaningful way maybe um, use it Add it to the HUD, maybe like a coin counter or something like that. Um, and some of you may already know how to do that. 
So now that we've done that, we can also, what I'm going to do, I'm going to print out the length. Venturi length. I'll say items dot count. So the count gives us the length of the inventory. And you know what? I call this items, but I kind of feel like I should have called that inventory. Just kind of sounds, sounds more gamey and sounds cooler. <laughs> so excuse me for this little change, but let's just change this to um, items to inventory. So all you got to do is just go back up. Yeah, I probably should have done that to begin with. But items is fine, whatever. Um, all right, so let's run this now and see what happens. Our console should now um, not only log out the name of the item we're collecting, but also then the length of our inventory. Okay, so you have collected a coin and your inventory length is one. And now look at this, you have collected a potion, your inventory length is two. You have collected a power, your inventory length is three. So that works perfectly. So now we have a mini inventory system and a way to populate it with different item types. So I hope you found this video useful guys. If you have, make sure you give it a big thumbs up down below for me, I'd really appreciate that. Thanks to my monthly Patreons for supporting me and this channel. Um, I really couldn't do this without you. You motivate me and help me to continue creating quality content for you guys. So if any of you guys want to um, support, I'll put a Patreon link down below. Uh, supporters also get access to all the different tutorial files and source code and other useful game making um, scripts, including the full complete uh, project file for this particular video. Alright guys, see you in the next video and as always, all the best on your game dev adventures.